Let's get into something that's nothing at all to do with COVID. It's time for our space chat with Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU. Brad, thanks for your time, of course. We're both in lockdown, yep. so COVID having some impact on us. But we'll plough on. Uh, you've been warning about this for a while. Space junk, it's rattling around outside in our orbit and it's causing some damage. There is, that's right. You know, we've talked about this before and some of the near misses that we've had. Well, it appears that in March, it's now been confirmed from data through the U.S. Space Force that now our second collision between two large bodies essentially in space has occurred. So back in 2009, we saw the first crash between two satellites. A, a Iridium satellite phone that was operated by the U.S. crashed into an old Russian Cosmos satellite. Uh, and when they crash, they produce 10,000 pieces of debris. So you're kind of seeing the network here and that collision from 2009. Because when they crash, they produce this stream of debris that then gets stuck orbiting around. Well, in March this year, a Chinese satellite lost communication, and it was a bit debated about what exactly happened. Well, after some mapping of some objects in that near orbit, they have now picked up multiple pieces, at least six of largest size pieces of debris from that incident in uh, March, uh, from essentially an old rocket booster from the Russians back in 1996. So now we've had the second major collision from two objects in space. And this is always a worry because as we said, there's yeah. a lot of this stuff in space. And once you collide, you just produce more bits of debris, which float around and can crash into more things. Yeah, they only need to be small at the speed they're going at. Yeah. So as we looked at recently, they need that laser up and running to ping it all out of the sky and they'll sort it out, hopefully. Um, exactly, that's right. Also, talking about this a drilling mission in Mars, yep. it was initially thought it was a success, this teeny tiny little drill getting some samples, but apparently it was too, what, dry and dusty to get anything of use. Yeah, so Mar Mars Perseverance, one of its big goal is to drill down, and you're kind of seeing the, the drill in the mound uh, hole that it went into, to sample rocks, to scoop those rocks, analyze it on board, and then save it for a return mission back to Earth. But what they found when they took the photos is they essentially just went into this very fine ground, almost, almost sandy-like. So when they drilled down, they weren't able actually able to scoop up any rock. They they ended up empty, and it was quite disappointing because you know this thing is obviously very complex to be operating remotely on Mars with the communication delays. They can't do it in real time. So in order for it all to work flawlessly, except the only part was the land they chose, was a bit of a disappointment. It was always supposed to have multiple samples and go multiple places, so they will just have to venture to their second one. Um, but a bit of a little bit of heartache for the scientists who uh, came up empty, quite literally, on their first drilling, a drilling attempt. Uh, well, they'll keep drilling. Uh, they'll right. get something, I'm sure. But there will be disappointment for those astronauts hoping to go to the moon in 2024. The delay, they can't get the suits made in time, really? Yeah, look, and this is a bit of a, a, a sad state right now. So NASA uh, has been trying to design new spacesuits for its moon mission. Uh, so you're seeing a simple prototype that they did <laughs> uh, unveiled. Funny. Look, and the reason it actually looks like funny is it's supposed to be more maneuverable. I know it doesn't seem like it trying right. to get up the stairs here. The previous spacesuits were so bulky, astronauts actually had a high rate of tearing their shoulders in them. So astronauts actually had a high rate of shoulder reconstruction surgeries because it was so hard to move. So they wanted right. to make things that were more modular, can fit better to the astronaut and work better on moon, the moon compared to what they had in the 60s. Now, this project is now running over time and over budget. The NASA Inspector General said it's now going to be as early as mid-2025 until these spacesuits are ready. And they were hoping to land humans in 2024. So it's going to push back that timeline a bit. So a bit of a disappointment and a slight Out of all the things to blow out that timeline... Brad, and we'll get these suits, that suit vision up again. I love the, the walking. It reminds me a bit of uh, my toddler, actually, when she's in a bit of a It really is, yeah, that kind of And all the things design. to delay it. Yeah, I, I just so, can't understand that they, they got a suit that worked in 1969 and now it's running overtime. So, so one of the problems they had was they did have a pandemic, so that slowed them down in the past year and a half. Um, but one of the issues people true. pointed out is they went to multiple contracts to build parts of it and then come together and maybe that wasn't the best idea. In fact, I think 28 separate companies are doing different aspects of the spacesuit. And so it wasn't as efficient as having one or two groups just do it all together, which has then blown out that timeline. So it is a bit of a disappointment. As you said, it's kind of hard to imagine they've gone this far over time. 
Um, you know, the, the old space suits or the ones they use now in, in low Earth orbit aren't suitable as well as for Mar or the moon. And they also come in these one size fits all. There's a small, medium, and large, and that's it. So <laughs> if it's not the right size, you're out of luck. So they yeah, maybe right. went too complex with too many companies too quickly. Okay. Yeah, maybe uh, the old uh, horse designed by a committee ends up a camel. Brad Tucker, exactly. great to not talk COVID with someone. We'll talk next week. Thank you. Take care.